Hello everybody, this is Kostas Sakas and this is our ninth tutorial in Photoshop. Now in this tutorial I'm going to keep on talking about selections. We're just going to get into more advanced tools of selecting. Now we're going to see those two tools right under the tool we saw in the previous tutorial and those two tools can basically make all sorts of selections that you make alike. Now the first one we're going to see is the lasso tool and the lasso tool basically makes a free hand selection. So you just have to click to start and then you just drag it and I'm just dragging it with my mouse and it's really hard to keep a straight line or uh, basically make a circle but it's going to be really helpful on some occasions and remember that those options that we had on the previous uh, selections tools are basically on every tool so you can see that if I click over here at the add to selection and I select this area with the free uh, lasso tool it just gets added to the selection so every old value that we learn still uh, works on this tutorial uh, about selections. so now the polygonal lasso tool we select let's just deselect this area and how this works is you basically have uh, to click every time and make a new line so let's just click 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 and basically you can make those lines around um, the uh, the shape that you want and you can basically make any shape you want and select the area and you can see I just selected this table I could make a star for example if I wanted to just like that and you just have to click every time and it's a really simple tool so let's just deselect that now uh, you can still see that the options are the same as at the lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool is the most powerful of the three of those and what that can do is basically you just click on some place and it can recognize the difference between the color and as you see I just have to move around it and it creates those squares and it recognizes the difference between the color of the tree and the chairs and the table so if I just click right now I'm pretty sure I've made a select oh, somewhere yeah here and I, I made a selection around the table just by going around it now what the options are the width is how far it's gonna search for a different color and it's 10 pixels from this side and 10 pixels from this side now the contrast is how much different the color has to be for uh, the for the selection to go on for example and the frequency is how often you're gonna see those points let's just make a new selection and you can see that we get those squares and the frequency is how frequently those squares are gonna appear in our selection and the magnetic uh, polygonal tool is probably the most powerful tool as I said and it's a little bit more complex than the others you can just test it out on your own just start playing around making selections with it uh, changing the options and you'll get different results now under that we have our quick selection tool and that's a real nice tool you just have to set uh, the options over here of how uh, hard your brush should be how sp much spacing it should have and I'm not gonna talk about those right now because we're gonna see those on brushes but the only thing I'm gonna talk about is size and you can set the size of your brush and you, as you can see I have this brush over here and if I enlarge it as you see I get a bigger brush so let's just make it a little bit smaller and it's smart because it can distinguish differences between different colors and as you can see it just makes a selection for me around the table by being smart enough to know that uh, it has a they all have a common color so if I were to as you can see I have selected the second mode if I were to go on and start selecting the tree it was going to add to that uh, everything that has to do with a tree and as you can see as I move around it adds the tree over here now if I move to this area which is white it would actually select uh, that one as well so uh, it just adds things with similar color to the selection and it's real smart so let's just deselect that and let's see the magic wand tool and that's a nice tool as well uh, now you just have to click once with that and it select places with uh, the same color and the tolerance is basically how much different the color has to be in order for it to make a selection so if I set the color the tolerance to one uh, yeah that's one and I deselect that 
uh, let's just deselect it and you can see that it's going to make a smaller selection just because it has to find really similar color in order to make that selection and the 32 is basically the most free you can get you cannot get uh, over that now contiguous means that let's just put that back to 32 it means that uh, all of the pixels that it finds have to be next to each other they cannot, you cannot find green color over here and add it to the selection. If I deselect that uh, and I made a selection, as you can see, it selects uh, pixels that have the same color from all of uh, all sorts of different places. And you might want that effect, so you can mess around with those uh, options as well. So those were nice. And let's just uh, see a final thing before we leave. Let's just deselect that. Now, if you got the selection, and you click on color range. Uh, let's just zoom out of the image first. We learned how to zoom out. I hope you remember that. Um, let's just zoom out. Okay. So if we go on select and color range, as we said, this is the uh, the menu that has to do with selections. Well, color range is basically uh, gonna make a selection of different colors of uh, similar colors in the image. And first of all, I have to pick a color. Like I picked this blue of the sea and let's just deselect that and as you can see all the whites part are going to be selected and the black parts are going to be left out uh, now the fuzziness is how m it's the same as tolerance in the magic wand it's how many more pixels you want selected so the more fuzziness you have the more the bigger the selection will be uh, because it's gonna it's not going to distinguish between different colors it's just going to take uh, a larger amount of uh, colors so basically the fuzziness is how much uh, bigger of a selection you're going to have. So let's just try that. If I click OK, you see it makes a selection of uh, similar colors over here at the image. And you might want that because you might want to actually edit all those colors that are quite similar to each other. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's just deselect it first. Uh, select, deselect. And if I go on color range, you also have this option of localize color color class, uh, classers and if you do that you basically uh, let's just do the selection yeah and you basically uh, what you get is uh, this area come on doesn't work yeah this area basically um, does not get selected like part of the area uh, let's just try that I'm not sure why it's not working yeah okay and now that I've selected the color you can see that this is kind of black and that's because I used the localized color clusters and you can see that uh, I can actually set it to that for example place and it can only select from this place from this area and that's what that does basically uh, and the selection preview is um, uh, well, you can actually preview uh, the selection that you're going to have on the large image. So let's just make it grayscale. And as you can see, the selection is going to be those white parts over here at the image. And if I click OK, uh, the image is going to get selected. So that was it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about advanced selections. And see you guys next time.